Hey, what's shaking YouTube? It's GK. I'm living the hobby high life still. And once again, I hope you're doing the same. Thanks for stopping by and checking us out. Today, I'm going to go over um, this morning's sales, kind of like every other day. And then we'll kind of expand on what we've been talking about the last couple days. So, man, uh, we'll try to keep it short, quick, and to the point. And hopefully, you'll stick with us. Uh, first thing going out today is a 2019 Goodwins Champions. Uh, Kristen Ledlow, and that's the Lumberjack. I know that the um, that Goodwin's Champions has, has re-released, you know, for the 2020 version. Um, man, we're still selling the 2019, you know, and time and time again, you know, um, it wasn't something that we'd usually get into, but we did, and this, this has kind of a crazy wood texture to it. I don't know if it will come up, um, but, you know, we took a chance on a bunch of base cards and, you know, a year later, man, they're, they're still, you know, we're still sticking them in envelopes. Um, the second thing that we got going out is a red press proof Walter Payton from 2017 Donruss. Um, this was a recent uh, pickup. You might've seen this on a mail day from our uh, good friends, uh, Kevin and Lauren, the Skull Brothers Sports Card Talk Show. So this one, um, you know, we got it. We went ahead and put it on the market. And the reason why is, you know, just wanted to see how, how those cards would do. You know, they said, hey, man, do whatever you want with them. I figured, man, we'd take a test run and, and see see what it looks like. And believe it or not, man, within like two or three days, one of them sold at, at a pretty fair price point. And believe it or not, man, it's $2.50 $2 for that, that card right there. Um, you know, I mean, I think it was a good deal for whoever bought it. Evidently, they thought it was a good deal as long as we can get it there safely in a PWE, man. It's a win-win all the way around. So thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Lauren. Um, the last thing going out is a two-card shipment in a 55-point top loader. So it'll send PWE. First one is uh, 2020 Travis Kelsey uh, season ticket, 2020 contenders draft picks. And as well, we've got a lasting legacy, 2020 2020 Legacy, Patrick Mahomes, Lasting Legacy. So that's going out to a buyer. Actually, man, just right up the road in uh, Rogers, Arkansas. So hell, I could probably, <clears throat> I could probably drive this to him uh, as as fast as it, it may mail. So you know, once again, man, you know, thank you to everybody for uh, supporting us like this. And you know, if you checked out yesterday's episode, you might, well, if if you're brand new and you're just checking this out, you'll say, hey, man. What's the big deal about you selling four cards? There's not a big deal about it, to be honest with you. The thing of it is, though, is if you watched yesterday's episode, um, you'll see that over time that that can average out to some pretty decent numbers. And that brings me to the next thing. So we talked about, you know, um, what what would you like to sell? Uh, how to, you know where to sell, we, we, we've been talking in the past couple of days about selling uh, cards, you know, and it doesn't matter what type of card, just kind of cards in general and how to get them on the marketplace. So, you know, if, if you got to that point, you're like, hey man, I wanna, I wanna go ahead and sell some cards. And you would ask me, hey GK, what's the best way to sell my cards or how do I sell my cards? I think the first thing you gotta kind of look at is all the different ways you can sell a card, right? This is what we do uh, because this works for us and, th and this makes sense. Now, when we first got back in the hobby and established our business as a corporation, uh, a lot of people that we talked to recommended getting into breaks or, or, or running breaks. So I did, I, I studied it, you know, I got into some breaks to kind of see the process and see how it works. And I was in Facebook breaks, I was in breaks on YouTube, I bought into breaks on eBay. I kind of went all over the map and was just kind of like taking in the information. I, was, I, was, I wasn't buying the breaks so much, I wasn't buying spots so much to get cards, I was buying just to observe the process and see how it worked. And here's the conclusion that I came to was, in order for me to do breaks, I was gonna have to have a lot of inventory, right? And that inventory was gonna be boxed inventory and that's pretty expensive, especially now with as, as expensive and hard to find as product is, you know, that's that's a big hurdle for, uh, it, it. at the time I could have done it because I had the capital, 
but it was it, it was too much of a risk. And because not only did I have to buy the, the boxes of parts, I have to have all the supplies, you know, the top loaders, the, the sleeves, uh, the team bags, the bubble mailers, the way to ship effect efficiently. You know, if you're doing a 32 team break, man, if you fill all the slots, man, you gotta have at least 32 bubble mailers there. So, I mean, it seemed like there was a lot of hidden costs wrapped up into breaking. And one thing that I also realized was without a sizable following on social media or a website presence, I'd kind of be pissing in the wind, you know? And there was already a lot of people out there established and they're doing quite well. And I just had to be honest and say, man, hey, I can't really compete with those guys. So breaking wasn't really an option. The second thing I kind of looked at, um, and it was, is, was interesting to me, was like a repack product, you know, like, hey, GK, you know, put all these, put all these cards together and just send them out in a big repack or mystery pack or something like that. I kind of thought about it, but once again, man, I had to be honest and look at what I had on hand. I was like, man, does my, do the cards I have on hand as inventory support me putting a bundle together and charging, you know, 15, 20 bucks or, or more? I really didn't have it. And the other thing that kind of got in the way of that was, you know, I didn't have the following on social media to where I was going to be a, a, able to effectively sell. I bought into quite a few repacks just to kind of observe the process. And one of the things I did like about it, and you'll see this time and time again, uh, there's a lot of guys that do repacks via their YouTube channel, like, you know, LKD Treasures, man, go go check him out. It's and then, you know, uh, Firecracker, Firecracker breaks it used to be the bomb pack now it's firecracker break guys like that you know we got into the, some of the ghost packs guys like that were, were doing a good job of being on youtube and they're transparent they're showing you everything and i like that. that that was like man that's that's cool i just didn't have the inventory to support it and once again there was a lot of hidden costs as far as the shipping goes that really looked like it was prohibitive um so we talked about breaks we talked about repacks um sets you know you could say hey man i'm gonna put together a set or a team lot and i'm gonna sell it and we looked at that and man it was it was kind of kind of tough you know um it didn't seem like it didn't seem like people were, were buying it and the the price point like if i sold that as a lot my price point might it's gonna be lower than the per card average by selling singles um another way that we saw and we kind of got in we, we just kind of checked it out i didn't really get into it um, was, was running razzes like, Hey man, you know, if you want this card, you know, Hey, it's, you know, a dollar a spot, 10 spots, whatever. Um, I saw that man. And I didn't, I didn't really like that approach to business. Um, not that, not that there's anything wrong with the people running razzes or the people doing razzes. It just, man, it, it, it was just something that didn't appeal to me. So, you know, what I settled on was selling singles, right. And, and singles just like this. And one of the big motivating factors in selling the singles was I had a buttload of singles, man. I mean, I'm talking a collection of about 20,000 cards and I could, um, I could, I could list them. You know, the bad thing about selling singles, man, is, is, is it is a lot of work, you know, cause you've got to, you got to photograph the, the, the card, you got to put it online, you got to price it, you got to comp it. Um, if you're doing the record keeping, you know, both manually and digitally, you've got to do all that too. So, I mean, it's a lot of work for very little return, it seems like. Um, but it's a place where we kind of found our niche and there was room for us. So based, you know, I had to take a hard look at my collection and what I was able to do. And I had to be honest at the potential for both and singles was just the perfect fit. And so we here, here we are over a year later, and we've got to the point where it's consistent and it flows day in and day out. But like I said, the pros or the cons would be a, it's a lot of work, but the pros to, to selling singles just like this is that, man, you learn a lot about the hobby, whether you're into football, off-market type of things, basketball, baseball, hockey, soccer, whatever it may be, if you're selling singles day in and day out, you're gonna learn a lot about the hobby. 
and you're going to learn you're going to learn pricing you're going to learn effective shipping methods you're going to learn effective inventory management you're also going to learn networking and customer service and support because you know we're going to touch three people with this whereas if this was a repack they would only just go out to one if it was a break it might not go to anybody, you know, it, I, I mean, I've, I've been in, how many of us have been in a break and got skunked, you know, this guy right here, you know, so it's a great way to, to learn about the hobby, learn about the operations it takes to support a, a business type of, uh, type of enterprise. And it's a great way to meet others within the hobby. So for me, that's, that's where it's at. And, and here's the thing, man, it can change and it can evolve. So that, that's one of the things. So whatever way you choose, you know, don't be afraid to like look at it, reassess and pivot or do something, do something a little bit different. Or if you're having great success, man, just keep doing what you're doing. And that's really all we got for today, man. I just appreciate all the support that, that we've gained over the past few weeks. It's been a month that we've been running daily videos and man, you know, I couldn't be happier. Hope you can say the same. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. And we'll be back soon.